Tim called Jesus a stripper, and he hasn't apologized. Yeah. I meant what I said. <laughs> when I used strong language, I felt that was the language to use at the time. I could have said a whole bunch of stuff, but on that day, <laughs> <laughs> that good old F word was the best thing I could come up with. See, every move I've made, it's because the Holy Spirit led me to do it. Welcome to the table. You know, one of the things about me, man, is I love studying um, influential people who have built the kingdom in a different way, right? And I think in today's day and time, we need more spiritual leaders who are relevant, who are real, and who are just raw. And I'm not a fan of the preachers who just preach the word, and then I don't sense that they're real or they raw. I just feel as if, okay, here's the word, here's what the word says, go do what the word says. I preached you, I hooped you, I hollered at you, and I got your money, um, and I'll see you next Sunday. And in today's day and time, I think that we're seeing a rise of influential people who are pastors, but they're pastoring the world um, on the internet. And I, I just got to say, man, one of my good friends is in the building, Pastor Tim Ross, former, former pastor. Now he just goes by Tim Ross, who is the founder of the Basement Movement and the B-Side the B app uh, that has some amazing things going over there in the B-Side, uh, from Michelle to Lecrae to some other people that are doing some great things. But uh, Tim has a book that has recently come out called Welcome to the Basement. And it is a book that's pretty much, the tagline is an upside down guide to greatness. And I was like, yo, Tim, you gotta come. You, you, you gotta come, you gotta come to the studio. I know you don't like being away from your beautiful wife. I'm so sorry, sis, that he left you for a day. Thank you for loaning him to the E3 community here at the table uh, for a day. Uh, because if you know anything about Tim, he don't play about his wife and he don't play about his family. And so the fact that he is here in the DC area to spend time with us means absolutely so much to me. So I really want y'all to just to uh, lean back and just take some notes. And we're just gonna have a brother to brother conversation about Jesus, about money, about life, um, and just have a, a transparent, vulnerable conversation. I know he's the king of vulnerability. I'm the prince. I haven't gotten there all the way yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the prince. I haven't gotten there all the way yet. I'm learning to be more vulnerable, but I'm scared because I don't know what y'all would say about some of the things that I really want to say, you know. But Tim, man, thank you uh, for coming. Bro. Absolutely. You know, thank you for coming. You know, Thanks just. For just uh, um, the fact that you're here means a lot to me, man. Um, we know here recently you just lost probably one of the most influential people in your life. Absolutely. Your father. Yeah. And, and, and since you're the king of vulnerability, I want to ask you, bro, how do you feel right now? Um, man, I have an incomprehensible peace. Mm. Um, I can feel the prayers of our dweller community. Mm. I, um, th the word that kind of encapsulates all of this right now is bittersweet. Mm. Whoever came up with that word, mm. they was on to something. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I am holding the tension of sadness and gladness. I'm holding the tension of like being ebullient about this book coming out yeah. and um, devastated that my dad, who is my hero, yeah. is no longer here yeah. in the earth. So. Tension, man. Tension. Yeah. It was so funny, man. I know people right now are probably saying, wait, wait, wait. Tim is doing, you know, he's he's promoting his book during the same time of his father passing. Like, how how do you do that? Yeah. And there's so many people saying, you know, I, I just broke up in a relationship. I just lost a job. I just had this life situation happen. I couldn't do this. Yeah. How was it that Tim can have this major of a life transition happen? and you're still about the kingdom's work? Because um, you can do both. Mm. Um, when we incorporate the word and instead of but, you would be amazed yeah. at what you can get through. Yeah. Because uh, and gives this support to acknowledge two things at once. Okay. Whereas but has to knock something out, Yeah. right? Yeah. So when I realized that God is Alpha and oh. <laughs> Omega. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The beginning and, and the, the end. end. Yeah. First and the last. <laughs> when I realized that Jesus is lion and lamb, yeah, yeah, that yeah. he is fully man and fully God, yeah. then I can be happy and sad. Ooh, <laughs> hell. Tim. 
I can have stuff going good and stuff going bad. Yeah. So um, I'm 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 incorporating the negative reality of my father's death yeah. into the celebration of this book coming out. Yeah. And my daddy would want me to do the same. Yeah. So I'm not running from anything. I'm not distracted. I'm not trying to like dive into work and not process my emotions. I have a I have a uh, a good agreement with grief. Mm. And that agreement is whenever you show up, mm. I will acknowledge you. Mm. If I got over him talking about my daddy right now, I would cry on this interview with you mm. with no problems. Mm. I wouldn't try to stuff it down. I wouldn't try to oh, let's not go there. No, I welcome grief. Mm. I'm acquainted with grief. Mm. I've had to do some grief work that has allowed me to process in a different way. And so um, I miss my daddy. Mm. And uh, last night when I got to the hotel, he would have been my first call. Wow. I already know what he would have, as soon as he sees my my, my uh, name pop up on his phone, he would have been like, son! <laughs> and then I, and then he would have said, what's going on? And I would have said, I'm in DC. He would have laughed. He had a map to stick uh, uh, a Places pin every been. every place I've been. Wow. He loved, one of his favorite things was, was for me to call him from the road. Mm. Cause he just thought it was like the, he got the biggest kick out of it. Mm. Cause he never traveled like that. And so last night I cried with my dweller community on an IG live, <laughs> missing my daddy at that time. So um, w when, you, when you don't try to run from grief, but you realize that grief is, grief is your friend, mm -hmm. right? That, yeah. Like the, the, the cost of love, I think Queen Elizabeth said, yeah. is grief. Yes. To really love deeply is to at some point grieve that deep love. Yeah. And so I'm just embracing it. Man. Yeah. I don't know if I could do it, Tim. Mm. Yeah. I think for me, which I acknowledge that that may not be something healthy for me. Right, 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 right. But I think for me, anytime I experience grief to that magnitude, I do bury it with work. You know, I I will I will just go work. I had a I had a rough day yesterday mm -hmm. and I came in here and just went to work. Mm. I just came into the studio. I, I do some things. Let me just let me just go to work. I, yeah. I tend to. I'm going through some issues within my family. Yeah. And it's like, man, I'm. I won't say I'm the middle person, but I am the person in the middle that understands everybody. And I'm trying to hold my family together, but it's I'm feeling the grief of yeah. what's happening. Yes, sir. And so I'm like, instead of me crying. Mm -hmm. Instead of me breaking down, I'm like, all right, let's go work. Let's let's go do something. Yeah. How did you get to the point to where you could receive the grief, but still be effective? Yeah. Because I feel as if if I was to feel it and yeah. respond to that, yeah, I don't think I will be effective. Yeah. Um. So grief comes in cycles, and everybody does handle grief differently. Yeah. You know what I mean? And if it gets to an extreme, that's where you gotta yeah. really be concerned about it. Yeah. But grief does come in cycles and it comes in waves. And I kind of know when the tide's coming in. Gotcha. I'm like, at least you're self-aware enough to know that, yeah. hey man, I kind of, I bury mine, right? Yeah. I see the tide coming in and I make space for it. Gotcha. You. you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not, I don't, I don't treat it like a tsunami. Right. I treat it like a wave. Okay. And so I'll go write it, yeah. right? Because my tears are an expression of how much my dad meant to me. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna hold those back. I'm not gonna rob my dad of the tears he deserves, mm -hmm. right? So when when that level of grief hits me, I am going to cry. Most times, grief, the way I handle grief is by laughing. Gotcha. I gotta find something to laugh about. Yeah. And so um, there was a lot of stuff to laugh about last night as I <laughs> recounted stories <laughs> with my dad. You know what I mean? That's good. And there's a lot of stuff that um, I'm going to cry about. I found a picture. I'm putting a, a picture up every single day between now and his funeral. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the second day I found a picture where uh, both of my boys are kissing my dad on both of his, you know, on each side of his cheek. Mm -hmm on a couch and I'm standing behind him and I'm kneeling down, kissing him on top of his head. Wow. And his eyes was closed wow. as the picture is captured. Anthony, I saw that picture. When I tell you I boo-hooed, wow. it was like, 
the ugly cry where your where your hands involuntarily hide your face because they like <laughs> you crying ugly ugly like you know right, what I mean right, right. and so it was it was such a um it was a beautiful moment I didn't even know it was coming yeah but that picture brought that wave in yeah fast <laughs> you know yeah. and I wrote it yeah I wasn't trying to choke it back or hide it down so um grief is a beautiful thing God gave us that and he gives us time to do it and if we if we embrace it, we can learn a lot about ourselves and the ones we love. That's so good. Yeah, that's so good. Before we get to this book, you're, you when we was talking, man, you said something that just really touched my heart about your your pops and and pops. You're in heaven and and listening to this, and I just want to say thank you up up front. I was with a very well known pastor, and he said um, last year, 2023. They buried more than 400 people. Yeah, wow. 80 percent of these 80 percent of these families did not have life insurance, didn't have a trust, didn't have a state plan, didn't have a game plan for their family. Yeah, families had to do GoFundMe. Yeah, family had to have assistance from the church. Yep, families car washes, car washes, yeah. sell pieces. Yeah, yeah, sell yeah. t-shirts. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You told me that your dad had your dad had y'all so squared away long before this season. Oh yeah. That's why I could be here right now. <laughs> Break that down. Like, why do you think that's so important for the people watching today? Going through what you're you and your family are going through right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like your dad already know where they was gonna be buried at. He already had the life insurance. He already had everything, money set aside. Like, hey, if this happens, activate this. You got this money, we'll get this, boom, 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 boom. Yep. How, how, how did that help you all in the grieving process, knowing that Pops took care of you all when he was extremely healthy? Yeah. He was like, no, I wanna put this in place for my kids. Yeah. Recently, I've completed my full estate plan and it's been an emotional journey, if I'm gonna be honest with you. But now I have a peace of mind knowing that my family and loved ones are well taken care of. But here's something you may not know that I think you need to know. According to a recent study, nearly 60% of African-American adults have life insurance. Now, wait a minute. Many of these policies may not provide sufficient coverage to fully protect their families in case of unexpected deaths. This lack of adequate coverage is a pressing issue among the black community. It can lead to financial difficulties and potentially hinder the building of generational wealth. In today's time, it's more important than ever for African-Americans to give priority to life insurance and estate planning. You see, by doing so, you can ensure that your loved ones are secure in the event of your passing. This covers funeral and burial costs, clears all debts and mortgages, and provides a financial cushion to help them continue building wealth, long-lasting wealth. Don't leave your family's financial future to chance. I want you to secure life insurance today. I want you to get a free life insurance quote through my friends at Ethos. All you gotta do is go to anthonyoneal.com forward slash life insurance. Again, that is anthonyoneal.com forward slash life insurance for your free quote or click the link in today's show notes. Protect your family's future and attain a peace of mind. At right now, and let's get back to today's show. Um, uh, I've never said this statement in my life, so let's just go with it and see where it processes, okay. right? Okay. If, if, uh, and I, I know this is not something that my daddy would have been aware of or consciously aware of as he did all this stuff that you just mentioned. Right. My daddy ensured that the only person we was going to grieve is him. <laughs> now, if you're going to be a narcissist, that's the time to be a narcissist. The only time, <laughs> the only person you're going to grieve, grieve is me. Yes. You ain't about to grieve the fact that you got to raise money. You ain't about yes. to grieve the fact that yeah. you can't find out the life insurance policy and you yes. don't know where did daddy keep his stuff. He was disorganized. Mm. Something was under his bed. And yeah. He threw something away by accident. He shredded the wrong Ooh. document. The only thing we grieving is Charles Edward Ross. Yes. The money is there. Right. The plot is paid for. Yeah. The... The, the casket is paid for. Yeah. Everything's paid for. Yeah. So the, see, he left us with nothing left to grieve except him. And my daddy was a blue collar government employee of the United States Postal Service. This is not a man that owned three Pizza Huts and left me with 
He left me a stack of five Bibles, fam, and six years worth of voicemails. Wow. He didn't leave me no. Right. But he left me peace of mind exactly. to only grieve him. What exactly. he could do, he did. Yeah. And so my dad worked for the Postal Service for over 30 years. Wow. But he got his affairs in order. Him and my mom had that type of conversation, had the forethought in, in their right minds and in their full faculty to say, let's make sure we have life insurance. Mm -hmm. Where we want to be buried. Mm -hmm. Let's get the caskets. Yeah. Let's make sure we have the life insurance. Yeah. Life insurance is a racket too. It is. Chow. It is. Let me tell you something. You get a hundred thousand dollar policy yeah. that you pay into all these years, yeah. and the older you get, the more it starts to dwindle yeah. in the payout. Yeah. I should have opened up insurance. <laughs> <laughs> I should have opened an insurance business, brother. This Why am I doing this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I can be a millionaire, <laughs> bro. That's where a lot of them are being a millionaire. Yeah, man. you know Listen, what I'm saying. So, it. so he he left us with mm. peace of mind, man, and. Um, that's another reason why I can be here. Yeah. Because he died on Saturday. Bro, I, this, I'm with you three days after my daddy died. Right. He died on Saturday. I got a good cry out on Sunday. Yeah. I jumped on a plane on Monday. Because <sighs> there ain't much to do. Right. <laughs> right. Nah, so. And that means a lot. It does, man. That means a lot. It'll free you. As a father who is now... About to be a New York Times best-selling author. Let's go. You know, and I, I, I'm i excited to dive into this book. And you guys, we're going to put this in today's show notes. And I need y'all to go buy this. Don't go buy no weave this month. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. Don't, brothers, don't go out on no date this week. It's not that expensive of a book, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> Can still get her weed. Uh, nah, brother, nah. I need her to get. The I book. need her to get the book <laughs> and the workbook. And I think she can still have. <laughs> if she's been listening to you for any amount of time, she'll be able to do both. <laughs> listen, listen. Okay, maybe you can get the weed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no sure. dates, brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No out to eat. You know what I mean? I want y'all to go and eat this book, mm. man, because. I mean, if you all are a part of the Dweller community, you all know what we get from Tim. And if he put it inside of a book, he is about to bless our lives tremendously. Um, but as a, as a, I'm just speaking in existence, as a New York Times bestselling author, as a, you know, number one podcaster, as an influencer who is impacting the world, as a father, what is one thing you learned from your father that you're going to be incorporating into your life as a father for mm. your kids? Um, being present. Gotcha. My, my dad wasn't just a provider. Um, he wasn't just a disciplinarian. My dad was present. Like, like I was, I was talking, uh, uh, with the dwellers last night and I was thinking about all of these like pivotal moments in my life. My dad was there. Mm. When I was born, June 26, 1975, mm -hmm. I was a breech baby. Mm. I was born feet first, mm -hmm. okay? My foot came out of my mom. My dad was the first person to touch me, even before the doctor. What? So the first person to physically touch me was in the earth realm was my dad. Wow. June 26, 1975. Wow. Okay? Um, January 1st. I'm sorry, January 14th, 1996, the day I gave my life to Jesus, yeah. my dad was the one leading the service. Wow. When I accepted Jesus. Wow. May 1st, 1999, when I get when I get when I exchanged vows with Juliet, yeah. my daddy officiated the wedding. Come on, man. Pops was there. Bro, my dad has been everywhere. Pops. My dad was my biggest fan. He thought I was the best preacher on the on the planet. Yeah. He went to all of my games growing up. He was in my, he, he came to my talent shows. Yeah. He took pictures of everything. He documented, he gave me a car when I was 16 years old. This man, I call him the uh, Pentecostal Cliff Huxtable. Yeah, yeah. Like, like if you want to know who my dad is, yeah. he's the Pentecostal Cliff Huxtable. Yeah. Not Bill Cosby. Yeah. Cliff Huxtable. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I need, that needs to be clear. clear. Yeah, I, need to, I need to be very, very He's clear. He's not Bill. <laughs> he ain't Bill. Because <laughs> Bill ain't Cliff, okay? He just played Cliff, all right? My dad is the Pentecostal Cliff Huxtable, and, I, and, I, and I, I won the human lottery when it came to dads. I did. I won the human lottery. 
You know, Tim, that's, now, now you're getting me vulnerable, man, because when I lean back, I literally, I'm blessed mm -hmm. to where I have two fathers and two mothers. Mm -hmm. So my biological parents had me outside of wedlock. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, they married um, outside of each other. <laughs> and the first man that I remember presence in my life was my other father. I don't like the term stepfather because he's a, he's a great father. Yes, sir. Right. And he's the first man. Mm -hmm. that I that I remember saying dead to. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. My biological father was in my life from day one. Yep. Never left. Right? Yep. Just him and my mom had their situation when they was younger. Yep. Don't need to disclose that. Yep. But, you know, it, it was, I, I'm blessed, right? Yeah, for sure. And when you say that, man, it just brings back tears because I had a very honest conversation with my pops, mm -hmm. my, my other father. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I said, hey, man, you were the first man that I, I ever called dad mm -hmm. and that I remember having that authority in my life. Yeah. But you were not at none of the biggest moments of my life. Mm -hmm. And I and I said, while my father was there, my mother was there. I still felt like a piece of my father wasn't there because the first man yeah. wasn't there. Yeah, that's good. My um, my high school graduation, he was sick. So he was there, but he wasn't there. Wow. My first sermon, he couldn't come. Wow. When I proposed for the first time in my life, couldn't come. Wow. My very first book that sold hundreds of thousands of copies, couldn't, he wasn't there. Yeah. And it's so funny when you say, be present. Yeah. Because... If you're, if he wasn't, you would have felt that. That's right. And at forty, I still feel like my daddy wasn't there. Yeah, yeah, for sure, absolutely. And there was a piece of me that was like, "Dang, pops is there. My my dad is there. That's cool. My biological father, mama's there. You know, the girl I'm I'm even chilling with is here. Yeah, 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 yeah. But where's my dad? Yeah, for sure. And I was like, you know, celebrities are there. I mean, I was like, but my pops is not there. That's right. And there was something about missing the present of a father mm -hmm. in my life. Mm -hmm. And so I, I hope that some of you all watching right now hear that, that your present as a father yes, is sir. extremely important. I don't care how old your son or your daughter is to this day. If something is big, my biological father is going to be there. Yes, sir. I could be 60 and he could be yeah. 90. Yeah. He will be there if yeah. he can get there. Yeah, 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 for sure. My dad gets upset if I travel and don't tell him I'm traveling. Yeah, 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 and yeah. And I'm like, Pops, I'm, I'm a grown man. He, right. But he'll say, but you're still my baby. That's right. And That's I'm absolutely like, correct. Dang, man. Mm -hmm. And that feels good to hear that from my father. Yeah. But Tim, you said that there's an upside down guide to greatness. Absolutely. Let's start from the beginning. Yep. I'm confused. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Because I think of upside down, it's like, okay, okay, this is the right way up. <laughs> right, right, right. But this right here will get me to greatness. Uh-huh, it will. Break it down, Tim. So um, I had this vision. It's, 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 uh, it's detailed in the book. Mm -hmm. But the nutshell is, when I was 30 years old, I had this vision of uh, this 100-story building. Okay. Um, and I go into that building and, and press the button to go up to the 100th floor. Yeah, yeah. There is no one through 99 in the elevator. Yeah, yeah. There's L and there's 100. Okay. So I go all the way up, and when I get up there, I realize intrinsically, not through identification, but I realize intrinsically, everybody that's up here on the 100th floor is an influential person in the body of Christ. Mm. Nameless and faceless. Okay. But I do know that these are influential people in the body of Christ. Everybody up there had compromised their character and integrity to be up there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That wasn't the place to be. Wow. The higher you went, the more compromise took place. And in order to maintain that height, mm -hmm. you had to compromise in some way. Mm -hmm. So I get back on the elevator. I realize I'm not supposed to be up here. Okay. I get back on the elevator and I'm about to press L, but I see a button going down that I didn't see going up and it's a B. So I go down 101 stories to what I now know is the basement. Mm. The door is open, all of these people are in there and they're just celebrating, they're so happy. They pull me off the elevator, they're screaming, cheering and one of them grabs me by both shoulders and says, thank you so much for coming down here. Not many people that go up there and make it down here. Vision's over. Holy Spirit, what was you? What what was that? And he said, Tim, everybody thinks that the 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 aspiration is to go up but I haven't called people to go up. I've called them to come down. Mm. And he said, if Jesus is the chief cornerstone, 
what floor would you want to live on? Exactly. That expression right there. Exactly. And his next statement was, get as many people to the basement as you can. I was 30 years old. I was a young adult pastor when he told me this. So I thought this was something I'm, I'm just giving people that I mentor and disciple. Yeah. I had no idea yeah. it would become a podcast. It would become a book that, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I realized that people actually think there's a corporate ladder to yeah. get up. Right. People actually think there's a come up. Right. There's actually an invitation to come down. <laughs> and all of my influence yeah. and all of my promotions have come from a basement from a, a, a philosophical way of living life, of thinking. Okay. This is what's got me all these opportunities. This is what's got me all these platforms. Yeah. This is what's got me on all of these shows. This is what's got me garnered the attention from people that praise yeah. and people that critique. Right. That's all come because my philosophy is, I'm gonna stay down here. Mm. Y'all can have that top floor, mm. but there's something that got it. You gotta do something to get up there mm. and stay up there. I'm not doing it. And so for those of us who are who are saying, okay, Tim, I, I, w I want to have the great life. Mm -hmm. But you're saying I got to go down. You got to go down. Like I can't just go up one floor? Like, no. Nope. I, I got to go down. Go down. Go all the way down. <laughs> How do I, if I've already started walking mm -hmm. up top, mm -hmm. if I've already started this journey of going up top, and I'm seeing some of the compromises you said I got to do, I'm seeing, you know, I may got to, you know, do this to to chill with these people. I may gotta, you know, act like this or talk like this to get into this room. Yep. H how do we shift that? Yeah. Like, how do we start the process of going back down? Yep. So we can start experiencing that true greatness. Yeah. So if you're if you're on the ascent, all you got to do is turn around. Ooh. Not not see now, Tim. You you you, you, you like me? Just just. Turn around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For it's, sure. It's not that easy. No, no, no. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. I know. I know. You know all you, you just said that. All yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Oh, turn around. <laughs> Tim. <laughs> it's so true. It is. It is true. Okay. But okay. it's like, hold up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so let me let me go slower. Yeah. All you got to do is turn around. But in order to turn around, you got to assess what is in you that thinks you wanted to go up in the first place. Mm, I see everybody up top. Yes, sir has the money, they have the ladies, they have the man, they have the freedom, they have the fame. I don't see the basement because it's below me. Correct. But I see that. Absolutely. So that's why I want to go up there. Yeah. And and I can see why that would be enticing. If I'm talking to the person that's right. on the ascent, right. I would go even further and say, not only do they have the ladies and the man and the influence and the money, yeah. they got the platforms, they got yes. the business, they got yes. the itinerary that you want, they yeah. got the platforms that you want to be on, they got the um, connections that you want to have. Here's a question that I always ask. Have you considered if they have peace? Mm. Tim Ross. Tim Ross. Because let's not make no mistake. Right. I was the one that thought, man, yeah. I need to go up too. Yeah. And was getting mad seeing the people that was up there that I knew was compromising yeah. and I was trying not to. Right. And I'm thinking maybe I should keep going up to be in that room to show them you don't have to compromise. And the Holy Spirit's like, no, you just need to come down. <clears throat> I'm like, but why they keep getting, and, one, and he let me vent for a long time. And then one day he just said, okay, I'm sick of this from you. He said, um, when you put your head on the pillow, and they put their head on the pillow to go to sleep at night. Who do you think gets to sleep faster? I don't think I've ever answered a question from the Holy Spirit so fast. I said, oh, I know it's me. <laughs> like, with confidence, bro. No arrogance, just come. Oh, I know I get to sleep faster. Oh, oh, for sure, I know. And he went, then shut up. Oh, man. He said, because what you have. Yeah. Peace. It's better than all the stuff that you just complained about them having Facts. that you think you want. Facts. You got the real thing. Right. So th that's what it's about. Yeah. And with that peace, right. then you can welcome all the things that he wants to give you yeah. in his timing. But I think some people may be looking at this and saying, well, Tim, I mean, what, what am I going to get in the basement? You know what I'm saying? Like, like what, what, I mean, if all that is up there and if I'm below everybody, like, like, 
Like, what am I? I mean, will I be able to have the? the I mean, I, I hear you on peace. I can go to sleep. Yeah. Uh, but I, I'm sleeping now. I'm sleeping four hours. Yep. But you're saying I can sleep eight hours. Okay, oh, okay, okay. Sure. I, I I can. Okay. Yeah. But Tim, I want that house. I want I want the car. I want people to to know my name. Yep. And so, when they look at you now, they're like, well, Tim, people know who you are. Yeah, they do. But I got here through the basement. So this is why we call it an upside down guide to greatness. Yeah. Andy, because the kingdom is absolutely upside down. down. That's what upset means. Upset yes, doesn't mean frustrate somebody, yes, piss somebody off, make somebody angry. Yes, upset by definition means to turn yeah. over. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so when you think about the kingdom of God, the way up is down. The yeah. way in is out. The way to live is to die. Mm. The way to get is to give. Mm. <laughs> so when, when you realize that this is all countercultural, mm. I'm not asking you to do anything other than what Jesus did. He's yeah. our rabbi. Yeshua tells us, come this way. Right, 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 right. I need you to forgive those that hurt you. I need you to pray for those that despitefully use you. I need you to love your enemy. Mm. He tells us all these things. Why? This is basement philosophy. This is basement living. Mm -hmm. The way he became king of kings and lord of lords was to die a criminal's death. Mm. So when you think about, well, everybody else doing this and they getting this, but I'm doing this and it doesn't seem like I'm getting nothing. You don't get it at the same time they Thanks. do. Thanks. Yeah. There's a purification process of your heart. What was the hardest part that you think that some people that you've had to go through in the basement that made you the man today? Mm. Because when, like, I followed you since you were at, at Bishop Jake's. You went from Bishop Jake's to uh, Gateway, yep. from Gateway to your church. Yeah. Uh, from your church, I was having to say, what well, at Gateway, that's when you were, like, you were, tra were traveling and speaking all over the conferences. Yeah. And, yeah. I met you at a big conference with a mutual friend. Yeah. And, I mean, you was, and even at that conference, man, there were so many celebrities in that room. Yeah. That was ridiculous. Yeah. Then you launched your church. And mm -hmm. then from your church, you resign from your church. And then you start the basement podcast. Yeah. So when people look at you, like, but, but Tim, you was at the biggest name in black church, <laughs> one of the biggest name in, in the white church and mm -hmm. church and period mm -hmm. to your own situation. Mm -hmm. Where was the basement at? Yeah. The basement was in here. Yes, sir. It was in my mind. What people don't see internally looking at those external movements right. is all of those movements were through obedience. Gotcha. None of those movements were through ambition. Yeah. And I'm telling you, godly ambition is one of the most dangerous forms of ambition. Ah. Oh. I don't say this with, I, I rarely share this. Because ambitious, driven people yeah, yeah. usually feel like, oh, then I'm just doomed. And you're not. You're wired the way you're wired. Right. If you're a go-getter, you're wired like that. But let me tell you what God, here's my definition of godly ambition. I've wordsmithed this and okay. workshopped it. Godly ambition is when you make up things to do for God that he never said he wanted to do through you. I'm going to go start a church, but God never told me to start a church. That's godly ambition. While you're the pastor of the church, we're going to we're going to uh, start a, a food shelter and 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 reach all of uh, the south side of this city. Yeah. And that sounds noble. Right, right. But if he didn't tell you to do it. Why are you doing it? You're going to have 17 green beans in the pantry. <sighs> and you're going to call it a food shelter and wonder why it's not really popping off. See, every move I've made is because the Holy Spirit led me to do it. Yeah. I'm not I'm not charmed. Yeah. I don't have a career. Yeah. I don't even have a reputation. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I don't care. When you, when you really get that basement level thinking, you like, I ain't got no reputation to hold on to. <laughs> I ain't got nobody to impress. Uh, Obedience is my life. Yeah. HBO, hear, believe, obey. That's my formula. HBO. I was at Potter's house for 13 and a half years. Right. And then in, in November of 2008, he said, it's time for transition. Okay. Juliet and I prayed all of 09, okay. 2010, January of 2010. He said, this is your last year. And it was. December 31st was my last, my last day at, P at PH. Yeah, yeah. Then I went into full-time itinerary. The Holy Spirit said, I need you to join Gateway Church. We wasn't trying to go to Gateway Church. You wasn't even trying to go? No, we were like, we don't even like to worship over there. 
<laughs> we came from black church, fam. We didn't want to hear no journal. Well, hold on, hold on. See, CCM see. sounds like a journal. <laughs> ain't no bridge. Ain't no hook. I mean, I like it now, but Tim. when I first heard it, I was like, why? This is a journal. This is not a song. Tim. This don't even have like a right. There's no formula to this song. Like, how do you? I, I don't even know. You know what I mean? Uh, so, but the Holy Spirit told us to go. So we went. Wow. How long were you there? We we uh, we joined the church in May of 2011. Okay. And I'm still in relationship with them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but we were there until 2015. They sent us to plant. Right. Embassy City Church. Right. I did Embassy City Church for seven years. Embassy City Church was up and to the right when I left. Yeah. This wasn't like no. No. Uh, you know. Exactly. Well, I mean, he had a church, but. Right. 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 There was we were like, thriving. There were only like 212 people there. Yes, sir. It really wasn't popping off. Yes. I know you saw him. I did all these other big stages, but his church wasn't doing that well. Yeah. Nah, fam. <laughs> <laughs> this church was $7 million a year in tithes and offering. Looking for a building. Wow. Up and to the right, fam. Two services. Needed a new, either go to three services or get another church. Get another church building. And the Holy Spirit said, so Your season as a lead pastor is coming to the end. I thought I was getting fired. I thought I did something wrong. Like, I thought I struck the rock twice and didn't know it. Like, I thought, what have I done? Like, did I do something wrong? He was like, mm, you did nothing wrong. This is, it's time to go. That was September of 21. Right, 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 right. March of 22, he told us who our successor was. Okay. May of 22, he said, do a podcast. I told him no four times. I said, no, sir. It's five million podcasts. I'm not, I'm good. He said, do the podcast. No, sir. Do the podcast. No, sir. I did it four times because Moses did not, <laughs> Moses said no to God four times too about right. going back to Egypt. Right, right, so right. I wasn't going to do it five. <laughs> like, I had biblical precedent for four, but I was not going to do five, Fact. right? Facts. After that fourth one, I was like, okay, I'll do it. Bro, we put that pod out July 6th with the first episode, 2022. Yeah, yeah. In three and a half weeks, it had, yeah. 25,000 subscribers. Yeah, you was, you, you was booming. We were like, what in the world is going on here? Me too. But you're saying it's it's the basement. It's the HBO. It came from the basement, fam. Mm. It came from the basement. Dude, I, all of this stuff that I just told you, yeah. my life at with, with, with Bishop Jakes, my life with Robert Morris, yeah. my life at Embassy City, my life in the basement, people think I'm like really busy. Right. But you know how much I be at home? Man, you you know, know how much I be at home. You home. I'm not. Yeah, you home. My my sons did a, a talking about being a present father. Yeah. My sons did a a, a theatrical play uh, called um, Unhappily Ever After or something like that. Uh, Nathan did tech. Noah was Prince number one. I was there on opening night. Come on, Tim. Come on, Tim. Only place I'm supposed to be is the place I'm supposed to be. Right, right. And when I'm supposed to be a place, I have a group huddle with my whole family. They know my whereabouts. Yeah. My kids ain't looking for their daddy. Mm. My kids don't wake up and I'm gone and they like, Did dad, oh God, dad's traveling again. Nah, we have a huddle in our devotion time. Let me tell you what daddy's next week looks like. Yeah. I leave on Monday. Yeah. I'm going to be with Anthony on Tuesday. Yeah. I'm going to be in Philly for two book signings on Wednesday. I'll be home Thursday morning. Come on. Come on. Come daddy, on. when do you leave again? I don't have to leave to the next weekend. What y'all got going on? Yeah. What are we doing? Oh, well, I got to show you these clips. I I, I went 12 and 1 uh, in uh, whatever game uh, Nathan be playing. He played some game. He had 12 kills, only one death. Mm. And I clipped it for you, Daddy. I can't wait to show you. Wow. When I get back on Thursday, I want to see it. What? That's that's what's on my mind. I'm getting through this so I can get back to my 15 year old boy, boy who's about to graduate high school. Come on, man. 15. 15. Homeschool? Homeschool. Absolutely, we're disciple makers. They're already in the basement. They already SD. I ain't playing. You think I'm playing? Yo, this ain't no like good idea I came up with, fam. Yeah, we live this. Ah, oh. yeah, this this is the way we live our life. <sighs> Tim, bro. <laughs> Those of us watching, three main things we're gonna get from this book. Um, you were gonna realize that. Uh, the Bible is the most upsetting book that's ever been written. Mm -hmm. Jesus lived the most upsetting life that's ever been lived. Mm -hmm. And unless you've been upset the same way, you will not be a person that can upset others. 
And you lead with that in the first first chapter, why you need to be upset. Absolutely correct. That's scary. Yeah. On on January 14th of 1996, my life was turned over. Oh. My life was turned upside down by the yeah. message, love, and hope of Jesus Christ. Okay. 28 years later, Anthony O'Neill, mm. I can't take back this confession. I can't take back this profession. I I I wasn't. I wasn't churched. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, uh, this is not like a religious skin. I, I was born and raised in the church. I'm just a church kid, so I do church things. I met Jesus. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit brought me to Jesus. There was no sermon mm -hmm. nor an altar call on the day I gave my life to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There was no oratorical <laughs> uh, 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 words. There, 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 were, there was no good music. The, mm -hmm. the organ wasn't playing. Oh, yeah, it was 48 yeah. people in a bowling alley. It was a banquet room in a bowling alley. My parents pastored a church bivocational. Yeah. In between them, working for the post office and the police department, they pastored this church with like 50 people in it. On the back row on that day, I gave my life to Jesus. My life was turned upside down from that day, bro. Yeah. I, I couldn't sin good no more. Mm. 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 I tried to go back and fornicate. It wasn't the same. I smashed and then I was crying. Yeah. Like, like, like. So all of this part, all of this in my life yeah. is, it, this is a distillation of my entire life's journey and how practical mm. your life with Jesus can be. Yeah. It doesn't have to be this euphoric, God spoke to me. Yeah. No, nah, it's, it's these little nudges from the Holy Spirit on a day-to-day -day basis yeah. that, that, that allow you to upset other people's lives, I look forward to getting up in the morning because I don't know how he wants to partner with me mm -hmm. to do something for somebody, but I'm available for it. Yeah. But that that book is that book is that sauce, bro. And why do we need to study God? Because I love study guys. Because me study too. Guys, uh, it helps me dive deeper into the teaching. Yeah, I'm trying to raise some, I'm trying to get some nerds. Yes. Like I need some people to grab this basement mentality and then they can express it in a way that not even I could. Wow. Right. Like the more basement dwellers that we have and the more people that embrace that mentality, they'll be able to take it to their sphere of influence, to their community, to, to arts and entertainment. Right. To government, to business, to family, to media, to religion, wh wherever there there their seven cultural mountains of influence, uh, as, you know, ascend them to. I, I want I want them to I want them to really have the mind of this. This is. And it comes straight from scripture, bro. No, I'm looking at it, man, right now. You, you got prayers. You're going to give us a prayer. Yes, sir. Then you're going to give us questions. I'm like, one, two, three, four, five, six questions. Mm -hmm. And then if you're in a group setting, you're giving us group questions yeah. and assignments. <laughs> I'm sitting here like, there's, there's no reason why we all should not be dwellers after reading this book Facts. and getting this study guide to go with it. Absolutely. I mean, because you're asking very basic questions. To what degree would you say that your prayer life has grown or expanded in recent years, one to 10? Mm -hmm. And then another question is, how often do you invite others to join you in the basement? Yep. In other words, how often do you share the gospel with others? That's right. Like, like you you are asking us, so you're you're teaching us, and then you're you're questioning us. Yep. Now, we get both of these. This is one. How much is it together? It's like thirty bucks. I was about to say weave again, but. <laughs> <laughs> Leave that weed alone. I'm just saying, I ain't gonna do you like that. But you guys, <clears throat> we're gonna drop this in today's show notes, um, and I, I I need you all to get this book. I mean, you all, we 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 consume so much. We know mm -hmm. what Beyonce is doing. Mm -hmm. We know where she's going. Mm -hmm. I was talking to my cousin, and she knows her security guard's name. <laughs> That's hilarious. And I was like, well, what school are you going to for college? Ooh. She was like, oh. I was like, we know everything, yeah. but do we know the thing that's going to make us better? That's good. Man. Do we know the thing that's going to give us more abundance, more wellness, and more freedom? That's good. 
And if we don't know that thing, but we know all the other things, the reason why we're not experiencing more abundance, more wellness, and more freedom is because we're not growing and we're not depositing uh, what we need into our brains, into our hearts, into our spirits, into our soul that will help us get there. I'm not mad at you being be fans of Beyonce or fans yeah. of this and that. I'm all, f be, be you, but just make sure while you're doing all that stuff, you're growing. For sure. And this is a book that, man, you know, as a matter of fact, Michelle, let's make this a book of the month uh, sometime this year. We are going to make this our book of the month. We can't make it this month, but we'll, we'll probably make it within the next two months. This will be the book of the month uh, for us here before the summer. And so get this book and we're going to read through it together. Get the study guide uh, because we're going to go through the study guide together as well uh, because we just got to we just got to do this. You know, we, we just got to do this. Thank Tim, you, you are by far one of the strongest spiritual voices in our generation currently right now, right? And I wanna end this show is, what do you think is the greatest thing that you wanna see changed within a Christian community within this generation that's coming up now? I can't believe you asked me this question. Oh man. I really can't believe you asked me, because I've been thinking about this a long time. Okay. It's uh, congruency. Congruency. Yeah. Okay. I want. I want Christians to be congruent. Mm. I think the big thing that's facing Christianity right now mm -hmm. is that they're gonna have to reconcile their incongruencies. It's the things they say opposite the things they actually do. Yeah. And how that continues mm -hmm. to lead to this duplicity mm -hmm. that doesn't allow them to be an integrated person. Yeah. So I'm for congruent. Okay. I'm for the. I'm I'm for being a congruent person. Yeah. I'm for being an integrated person. Yeah. If I'm good, I'm good. If I'm bad, I'm bad. If I if if I say yay, I mean yay. Yeah. If I say nay, I mean nay. Yeah. I think the body of Christ would be so much better off if we just knew where you were. Mm. Mm. Not who you thought you had to be, not who you're afraid to be. Just tell me where you are right now. This is this is the first question asked by God in human history, as it is counted for through Genesis. The first question God asked in human history is, where are you? Mm. And he's not looking for Adam. Right. He wants to know if Adam knows where he is. Through self-awareness, where he is right now. I think people are scared to say that though. Of course they are. Uh, and, and I say this respectfully, I don't think the church has created a safe space for people to be honest to say where I'm at in life. And this is one of the incongruencies that have to be reconciled. We literally, the church has said, come as you are. And, but, when the truth is, Yeah, we can. not Come until we find out. Right. <laughs> oh, 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 man. Oh, Tim. Yeah, that is that you're speaking something right there. I was talking with a friend and I'm trying to, 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 to change this scenario around because I don't want this to be um, um, uncomfortable for this particular friend. Mm -hmm. But this particular friend no longer wants to go to church. Mm. Because when he got the church, the pastor identified this particular person and he he this particular person, uh, the pastor, he asked this particular person a question and this particular person told him the truth. Mm -hmm. And the truth was, I enjoy. Sex. Mm hmm. And no, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and tell you I'm giving it up today. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this particular pastor told him, yo, then you're never going to get right with God. Hmm. And that person never went back to church. Oh, my gosh. Because this this particular person was like, hey, this is where I'm at. Yeah. But I know this is not where I need to be. Right, absolutely. So I'm here. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the church shamed this particular person. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. Yeah, absolutely. Because you told the truth. That's right. When half of the people in the church feel the exact same way as you, 
but show the doing difference. the exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> but but like yeah no 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 I'm not I'm not girl you a virgin uh, girl yeah yeah. Like, but you told the truth. Absolutely correct. And he was like, and that that was my problem. Yeah, it was I enjoy it. Yeah, and I'm not gonna sit here and lie. That's exactly right. But I wanted to come in and grow. Right. But as soon as I tell you the truth, it's oh no, you're going to hell. Right. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. Yeah. And I agree that the church, we have to, we really have to be at a place to where we mean what we say, come as you are. That's absolutely correct. Because Tim, you can't change nobody. I can't change no. nobody. It's the word of God. Only changed. the Holy Spirit can convict people of sins and give that transformation of heart. That's what he did for me. Yeah. But it all it didn't all happen at the same time. Right. I get I talk about January 14th being an upsetting day in my life, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The day I gave my life to Jesus, I was a born again porn addict. <sighs> My soul was saved. Right, 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 right. My body right. still had hooks all through it. Right, right, right. right. So porn, porn didn't leave, drop off me like that. That was that was another decade yes. journey yeah. into getting to the root of why did I continue yeah. to see this as the form of medif- uh, me- medication yeah. that was numbing something deeper. So, so porn was the fruit. It wasn't the root of the issue. And I had to get down to the root and getting down to the root, man, is tenuous work. Absolutely. It Absolutely. really is tenuous work. Tim, you got dwellers watching. You got the E3 community watching. They're hearing this saying, you know what? You know, Ayo, Tim, I don't have a sex problem, but I have a lying problem. Mm-hmm. I don't have a lying problem, but I have a gambling addiction. Mm-hmm. I have a porn addiction. I have this addiction. You have a forgiveness problem. Man, listen. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't even got to keep it on some addictions. Yo, stuff. listen. We can go, you have a petty <laughs> problem. Yo. You have Yo. You, you 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 have a a uh ambition problem. Yes. We you all this ain't be- you, you got a money problem. You got a, a money problem. Pro- you got a budgeting problem. Yes. I know I need to get better. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. How do I start? Turn on the lights. Mm. Light the candles. That's it. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. <laughs> right. It. Th- this is. It all starts with the lights coming on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If your if your eye is full of light. Yeah. And there is no dark corners. Yeah. You can be free. Mm. Whatever's in the dark is gonna grow. Whatever in the li- is in the light is gonna shrink. Mm. That's where that's where my victory in uh, over sexual immorality came from. Yeah, yeah. Because I started flicking on lights. Gotcha. Again, you can't care about your reputation if you're gonna do this. If you're gonna be a basement dweller, yeah. You can't care about what people think about you. Yeah, yeah. You got to be able to flick on all them lights and be like, "Hey, I'm off the hook if I get out here." Facts. So I'm not going. Nice. <laughs> I don't trust myself. No, that's real. You know what I'm saying? That's real. Married or unmarried, I don't trust myself around right. certain people at a certain time yeah. in a certain atmosphere, right? Yeah. Wedding Weddings are beautiful. The, the reception, I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Me, I'm staying. <laughs> hey, you might catch the guard. I'm like, hey, how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The light's on. <laughs> I leave with Juliet. We, 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 we bouncing. Gone. Yeah, absolutely. And if Julia can't make it and I go to a wedding, I'm I'm leaving faster. Oh. Yeah, I'm not going to nobody's reception. <sighs> Everybody looks great at the reception. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And so I'm chunking yes, deuces. Lord. Yeah, I'm I'm chunking deuces. But but this is but that's just lights coming on. Facts. That ain't he's a perv. Right. That's, he can't control himself. Right. That's no lights are going on. Mm. I, I'm there's a there 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 has to be this ability yeah. to Keep authenticity and vulnerability at the forefront. Absolutely. Absolutely. That was Adam and Eve's mistake, bro. Ah. I don't even think it was what they did. Yeah. It's what they hid. Man, you just got me thinking. But you made me feel better, too, though. Because I have friends right now. And they are in relationships. And one of them was like, yo, bro, why are you texting me with my wife? But you're talking to my wife. I didn't even text my wife. Because. I said, bro. We don't do that. That's your wife. That's exactly right. <laughs> that's exactly right. And what I don't want to do is in privacy, dark, y'all go through an issue. You see me on her phone during that issue. 
and you're thinking something else because you're not privileged to the conversation. And I'm like, bro, I, and I'll be honest, I've been there before, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, to yeah, where yeah. when a wife felt like her and her husband was going through something, she can flirt with me. She just simply said, you look real good today. I said, oh, thank you. Next thing I know, I'm getting cussed out by my boy yeah, because yeah, yeah, he's like, yeah, wait, y'all, yeah. you over there flirting? I said, nah, I, I, you see the text? Right, right, the right. Bro, right, what the world? Right. So now I'm like, nah, I don't, I don't even do that. Yeah. Hey, sis, bro, and yeah. I, I act like bro's not even there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But you're on the whole text thread. Absolutely correct. So there's you're not no issue. Allow your good to be evil spoken. No, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. Absolutely. No, sir. Because yeah. I don't want nothing in the dark. Yep. Yeah. Stay in the dark, and yep. then, like you said, that grows into something that it should have been in the light, and would have exactly, never grown. That's exactly right. It should have never grown. Yeah, we got we 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 let stuff metastasize. Oh my gosh! Talking about ah, oh, ain't nobody tripping. Yeah. Oh, she won't care. Yeah. Oh, they ain't gonna think nothing like that. Nah, man. No. Some stuff just optics. Tim, I'm thinking about. I was thinking about this before I ever got in the public eye, like I am. Right. But nobody don't nobody have no pictures of me. Wow. Being somewhere I'm not supposed to be. Wow. Don't nobody have no text from me. Wow. That ain't supposed to have no text from me. Wow. Like there's a certain way yeah. I move. Right. And it's the reason why I can, I've done this for 28 years yeah. without scandal. Yeah. Without, you know what I mean? Illegality or immorality. I didn't leave my church because some smoke was coming. Yeah. Yep. 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 We can't say that for let's, all the preachers. Let's get that right, right. Now. <laughs> huh? I didn't I didn't duck a case. Right. I didn't, oh, he went into podcasting because the Lord told him to. And then you find out 14 allegations uh, have come out. It was 16 women. How many people and thought of that, man. Tim? How many people <laughs> asked, okay, what's really going on? Uh, oh, uh, ask me that when I transitioned? Yeah. A bunch of people. Wow. Because the church is so incongruent, they haven't seen healthy transition. They've seen so much jacked up stuff right. that they only could assume. It has to be negative. Bro, everything okay? It has to be. I promise you it's okay. And if you don't believe me, ask Juliet, who right. will never lie to cover nothing right. yeah, yeah, as yeah. it relates to Timothy Charles Ross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. I'm with you. That is funny how the church and even the people, because even when I transitioned from Dave, they automatically thought it was something negative, either on my end or his end. It was like, yo, it's just a transition. Yeah, the season was up. Season was up. Season yeah. was done. We both agreed. Like, hey, we think this is the best thing for both parties. Yep. You know, and I'm still in connection with them, too. Love them dearly. Yeah. Um, just actually talked to them all just a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago. Yeah. Right. But it's like, why do we automatically feel as if something negative has to happen? Because we the, 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 the majority of our world is incongruent. Tim. You know what I'm saying? Tim. What we say and what we do usually are not like this. So yes. when you find people that are literally integrated beings, yes. you're like, okay, wait, you're weird. There's so, got to be something behind it. Exactly. That. Nah, Ross. Yeah, what you covering? What, uh, yeah. it can't be that good. It's, it's coming. Hey, bro, uh, uh, somebody, I don't look at the comments, uh, that people put under my posts. Right, right. Like, I don't go in there like, I will now scroll through comments and yeah. see what people are saying under my posts. But obviously you glance sometimes and, and see somebody. So I put up something about uh, talking about this guy. It, 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 I bring it up because it's hilarious. Yeah. This guy, uh, I, I was talking about this guy who um, gave his life to Jesus. Uh, he, he was uh, homosexual, that's the way he was wired, that's his leaning, that's his bent. He was never gonna get married, never be attracted to a woman. So he just got a bunch of church mothers to hold him accountable. And he wound up like one of the best evangelists in his area. Wow. And But never had a compromise or fall, anything like that. Right. So this one dude, I glanced down and this dude had put in the comment section, man, just stop using all these excuses. That dude is you. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I was so weak. <laughs> Bro. Wow. And because the comment section is not my area, right? I have a, uh, my my philosophy is content is my responsibility. Exactly. Comments content. are their opportunity. Yeah, yeah. So they get to have that. Yeah. I don't, I do this. Right. They get to have that. Right. So I saw that, but I didn't get offended. Right. It just made me laugh. Yeah. That, but how many dudes is on the deal that would support <laughs> that? And then how many people, how many authors or the publisher that that content would be like, hey, dog, yeah. that ain't me. Yeah. Well, then if it ain't you, why do you even have to say it's not you? Uh, what are we talking damn. about? So so yeah. integration yeah. 
Bro, integration has brought me so much peace. 2003 people, Tim use strong language or he cursed or yeah. whatever they want to call it. Tim called Jesus a stripper and he hasn't apologized. Yeah. I'm integrated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I meant what I said. <laughs> as distastefully as it may have left. Uh, come on, Tim. I meant that thing. You meant that thing. Oh, I tell you, I meant it. <laughs> when I use strong language, I felt that was the language to use at the time. I meant that thing. Yo, Tim. And I have a large vocabulary. <laughs> I've been reading the dictionary a long time. I could have said deplorable. I could have said egregious. I could have said uh, untrustworthy. I could have said a whole bunch of stuff. But on that day, <laughs> that good old F word was the best thing I could come up with. I'm just telling y'all. But but I'm here. And, 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 if, and if I get convicted by the Holy Spirit, right, right. I will come back and say, dead wrong. Dead wrong. Went too far. Yeah, yeah. I, and I have. Yeah, yeah. I've actually come back and had to do that sometime. Okay. There's been some stuff we've posted where Juliet was like, I don't like that. Ooh. Take that down. Wow. It came down immediately. 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 There wasn't no, no, and it's getting good view. If it's going, if it violates Juliet, yeah, yeah. my children, yeah, yeah. Robert Morris, yeah. or Jerome Lewis, yeah. were my accountability, they can pull my card at any time. Wow. They can shut the whole pie down if they want to. Wow. Because I'm still submitted to authority. How important is that? Because I, I, I was at your launch for B-Side and mm -hmm. I love seeing yours and Mike Todd's relationship and how he submits to you. Yeah. And how you've been able to call him out on certain things and Mike will respond. And we see how God has elevated both of you all. How important is for the people watching right now who may not have access to you, to yeah, Mike sure. Todd, to someone else, yeah. to find accountability? Mm-hmm. How important is that for us to have accountability for growth, for, you know, to experience greatness? Yeah, for sure. Because I don't think a lot of people understand how important accountability is. So so um, here's how important accountability is. Jesus said, I don't do anything unless the father tells me to. Mm. I don't say anything mm. unless the father tells me to. Mm. All his authority was bestowed to him from the Father. Got it. That's submission to authority. Yeah. Without being submitted to authority, yeah. you don't actually have God's truest blessings yeah. over your life. You may be able to finagle it and prosper in the whole thing, but if somebody can't come pull your card, and here's the thing, it needs to be somebody. Right. Now, everybody knows who Robert Morris is. Right. Jerome Lewis ain't popular like, do you know who Jerome Lewis is? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking like, okay, who is Jerome Lewis? Let me see. Let me see if I can remember this, but I know. Jerome Lewis has known me over 20 years. Me and Juliet, if we pissed at each other, will smush our faces. And call Jerome. On our, on our FaceTime, we don't even want to be skin to skin at the time. And he going to put us right. Wow. And whatever he tell us to do, we going to do. Wow. Jerome Lewis is a man of character and integrity, has pastored the same church over 20 years. He was bringing me to, to come to his church when I was doing stand-up comedy in my 20s. Wow. That man has known me in every iteration. When I came out as doing what the Lord told me to do with, with the basement, he came to the church, him and Rome, his son, flew to Embassy City Church in Irving, Texas. He had got up that morning and wrote something in his journal. He hadn't even ripped it out yet. Mm. After, the, after the nine and before the 11 o'clock service, he said, son, the Lord told me to give you something. He opened up his little journal, ripped it out and handed it to me and it said, you are John the Baptist. Wow. You are a voice crying in the wilderness. Wow. John wore different clothes. Yeah. He had a different voice. It was like four things. And it was like, what you doing? If Jerome ever called me and said, hey, I, you've gone too far. You will be like, okay. Oh, then, I, then I've gone too far. <laughs> like it's not, it's, it, it's author, submission to authority means just that. Yeah. If this person can't pull my card, I ain't got to agree with them either. Mm. They know you ain't signing me, I'm 48. I'll be mm. 49 and you're not. Nah, you say it's wrong, it's wrong. I ain't even got to agree with you. Mm. But I, but I gave you that authority. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, and don't, it, you don't have a lot of them. It's just two. It's just and your two. wife. And my wife. 
And, and and my peers, yeah, yeah. D block is real to me. You yeah. know what I mean? My relationship with you is real. If you called me and said, "Hey, bro, that yeah. that landed on me wrong," yeah, yeah. I'd be like, "Man, let me check that." Yeah. So it's not like they are the only people that can speak, right? But let me tell you who can't. <laughs> I can give you the less who can, <laughs> which means everybody else. What about this? Nope. If he if it ain't oh! the list I just gave you, they <laughs> can't speak. And we see it. And we see it. I, we haven't seen one video you apologizing for the stripper, for the cousin. I'm like, y'all listen, man, because I think some people get so distracted by that, but they don't listen to your full message. Absolutely correct. They take the 90 seconds, and the 90 seconds becomes the full message. Exactly. And so so, so let me get back to the incongruent, right? Right. It, my thing is, at least I'm congruent. Right. Right? It, right? You may not like it. It may rub you the wrong way. Right. But there's no duplicity here. Right. Let's talk about the dude mm -hmm. that got a problem with what I'm saying, but he in the cigar lounge with an old fashioned. But he can't post that pic because his church would get mad. See, you're already, you're already, Thank well, you some stuff is private. No, 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 no. We're not talking about, I don't, I'm not saying you, you should, you should, you know, in a plume of smoke, smoke your cigar and da 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 da, and right. hey, had a great time at church today. All I'm saying is the fact that it has to be hidden exactly. and you can never have the picture out exactly. because they would look at you the same. You ain't free. Mm. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I use the, I can use the cartwheel emoji <laughs> in my phone. You can't. I'm that free. I'm that free. I can use the cartwheel emoji. Hey, man. You can't do that. Yo, listen. You ever catch me with an old fashioned? It'll be like. I guess Tim likes old fashioned. <laughs> you know, what I mean? it won't be. <gasps> hey, can you delete that picture? Yeah. Don't put the. I mean, no. yeah. Anthony, you ain't. Yeah, like you ain't gonna post it on the gram. I ain't gotta do that. Right, right. I feel you. If I have an old fashioned, I just have an old fashioned. I'm because right. because Scripture said, "Don't be drunk mm. with wine." Mm -hmm. It never said don't drink. Drink it. But but we are put. We always put fences. Yes. Around the commandments. Yes. Because we think. That if somebody, if we just give the commandment, nobody can actually Facts. live up to that. A, a Jewish rabbi said, and I promise I'm trying to shut up. Yeah. A Jewish rabbi told me uh, uh, that they put fences around the law. Okay. 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 The fences that were around the law, he, here was one of the laws. Uh, thou shall not, uh, this is in the Old Testament, thou shall not boil a baby goat in its mother's milk. Mm, mm. That's a law in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thou shall not mm -hmm. boil a baby goat mm -hmm. in its mother's milk. So guess what the uh, priest did as years went by? Because we don't want nobody to boil a baby goat in its mother's milk, let's make sure that if we have cheese, we don't have meat on the same plate. Because you know. Yeah. If you have cheese Jeez. and meat on the same plate, you might go home right. and boil a baby goat in its mother's milk. Now let's get a, let let let's 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 jump that forward to our uh, Protestant Christian churches. Right. Um, thou shalt not sleep with thy neighbor's wife. Right. Can't get no male and female to go to lunch together, cause you know that happened. You know how penises and vaginas work. It's too dangerous. Wait, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> the commandment is don't commit adultery. The commandment is not a work lunch. <laughs> and if you are going to sit here and say oh, that a male and a female cannot yeah. have a platonic relationship. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Then why do we have brothers and sisters in Christ? <laughs> right. If the siblings have to be segregated. Oh my goodness, Tim. So I'm just trying to get rid of the fences, fam. Get rid of them. Get rid of them. Get. Rid of them. But Tim, would you say if you have a problem with sex, then you shouldn't be going to lunch with the opposite woman? If you have a problem with lusting. Yeah. And let's keep it a buck in 2024. Yeah. So that means that some men can't go to lunch with other men. Oh, shit. And some women can't go to lunch with other women. But if you can't even be honest about that, it may be for some man, he's safer with the woman because he ain't attracted to her. <laughs> he can't go to lunch with his... 
his boyfriend. Right, right. His friend that's a guy, because that would be his temptation. That would be. But his. if he can't even say that, oh. then we think a dude that's over here that has no sexual attraction to a woman. Right. Oh, God. They're close. Right. Right. You know what happens when a guy and a girl get together. Oh, and you don't even know. It's preposterous. Bro. Oh, man. I was called gay for years in high school. Right, right. Because I had beautiful women that were, they were my friends. Those girls were my friends. Yeah. And once I put you in the friend zone and then you're like a guy sister to me, ew. Like, I could never. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you gay. You ain't even trying to smack. Bro, that's my sister. Bro, listen. So, congruent, bro. Listen. I, I'm not afraid of women. Yeah, yeah. Women's bodies are safe with me. Right, right. If there's a woman I'm attracted to, right. I move around. She won't even know it. Ooh, damn. She's not the problem. She's not a problem. Her yeah. parents made a great collab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. She's not the problem. Right. My attraction right. is not even the problem. Right. My reaction to my attraction yeah. can become a problem. So I move around. I steward that. Mm. When I was a young adult pastor, I, I had, there were three women at three young ladies in my young adult ministry that I was attracted to. Okay. Obviously, I didn't know that until I sat down with them to have a counseling session with them. Right, right. Um, and this is three women over four years, so it ain't right. like no, whatever. Right. But attraction is not something you plan. Right. Right. It's, it's I didn't know. Facts. They came in and I'm like, oh my God. Facts. <laughs> Everything about you is right. Right. And I'm married. Right. I, I'm a professional. We had that counseling session. Yep. Thank you so much. They left. Mm -hmm. I called my admin in and I said, I can't meet with her no more. What? They were so protective. Dad, uh, uh, pastor, uh, what, what'd they do? I said, they didn't do nothing. I said, I found myself attracted to that individual. And so you have to assign them to a new pastor. Ooh, temp. that's integrity. That's stewardship. That, mm -hmm. that isn't, I think some pastors will keep the door open. Cracked. No, no, I'm not meeting with you again. Because <laughs> I don't need to find out nothing else more about you. I don't need to smell you. Because that attraction will get deeper. Yeah. And then the enemy knows how to slide in at the right time. As a counselor, yeah. as a as a person giving spiritual counsel Ooh. for one of my yeah. congregants, yeah. it is malpractice for me to look forward to meeting with you in that type of way. That's malpractice. Mm. That's mm. malpractice. Mm. I should not look forward to seeing her uh, like that. Right, 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 right. Right. If I just got something on my calendar, yeah. Gotta meet with but I can't be like, oh, oh she fine. Oh, yeah, she coming in. at two. Right. Man, no. please. Uh, and then I go, go I'm gonna go home and look at my wife and I. Ah. Uh, nah, fam, you got me twisted. That's what that book is giving. So don't read this book if you ain't trying to grow up. Come on, Tim. This ain't that book. Tim said, don't, even re don't read the book. Don't even do it. If you ain't trying to grow up. There ain't no study guides for books that ain't going to make you grow. <laughs> they won't even, there ain't no study guide get to give. <laughs> I don't want you to have nothing more than what you read. <laughs> we are way over time, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out with you out, fam. <laughs> yo, we are way over time, Tim. <laughs> this man said, yo, don't get the book. So listen, here, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Man, this is how we're going to end the show. Do not get this book. Do not click the link in today's show notes. If you do not want to grow up. That's right. And, and, and we know here at our platform, everything goes back to how do we expand in abundance, wellness, and freedom. And how do we do that? It's by putting Jesus at the foundation. For sure. Of everything. Absolutely correct. And this book right here is going to put Jesus at the foundation of you because you're going down to the basement. Yes, sir. And when you get down into the basement, that's where Jesus is. Mm -hmm. And that's where your wealth is going to come from. That's where your influence is going to come from. That's where your freedom is going to come from. And so, like he said, don't click the link in the show notes if you don't want that. If you want to stay average. If you want to stay losing sleep because you're doing something you know God didn't call you to do, then don't get this book. Don't even get the study, guys. Matter of fact, go ahead and just 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 delete this show from your history because this ain't just for you. Uh, absolutely, and we love you. Yeah, absolutely, you're correct. gonna be congruent. We love you so. Much. <laughs> I want you to be so congruent. <laughs> you're gonna be congruent, exactly. You know, but if you want to be congruent with Jesus, yes, come get this book, man. Absolutely, come get this book, and it also not just get the book, 
but become a dweller if you have not become a dweller. Um, and and I genuinely mean that. He has an app uh, to where y'all can get all of his content and his other amazing teammates on there that are doing some amazing things. My sister, uh, Michelle w Williams, is over there. Uh, my big bro, Lecrae, who will be on the show next month, is over there. Um, he got some guys over there, too. What's that one guy named? He, he cuts up a storm for Jesus. What's his name? Jamie Kilstein. Ja that yeah. brother, boy. I, yeah. I, that first show, I was like, ooh. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. But then I got to that second one. Uh -huh. when I got to that third one. That brother loved God. Yeah. He he was an extreme leftist atheist. Wow. Mentored by Robin Williams. Wow. And he and he's Jewish. Yeah. He gave it. He found Yeshua. Yeah. And received him as his Messiah. Listen, so listen, first thing is, let's get this man to become a, help him become a New York Times bestseller. Get this book. We're going to drop all of his social media, his YouTube channel, uh, the B-Side app link um, in today's show notes. And I promise you, you will love being a dweller. All right, you guys. So I'm so sorry to keep you all uh, over our time. I told you we're trying to keep you at 30, 45 minutes direct straight uh, with more content throughout the week. But this was this was a God thing. And I really want to make sure y'all got to see my brother. I mean, this this is him. All right. Love you all. God bless you. We'll see you on the next show. Peace out.